If your strings break during a performance or even practicing at home, you want to be able to change strings fast. And that's where locking tuners can really help you. Locking tuners have a small clamp which comes up when you tighten the mechanism which holds the string in place. We're going to be using the analog clock method for maximum stability with Geica lock and tuners, which are a solid, relatively inexpensive option. If you are interested in purchasing your own, you'll find the link in the description, which also helps support the channel. Later in the video, I'll also give you a pro tip on how to change the look of your locking tuners without having to do any more extensive mods. Just follow these simple steps and you'll be rocking in no time. Step one, get the tools you need. You'll ideally need a Phillips head screwdriver and a wrench. Here, I'm using an adjustable wrench for the job. Step two, loosen or remove the strings. A note on your strings here. If you've just got the new locking tuners and have relatively new strings on your guitar that you want to keep, you can on first use with your new locking tuners. You'll be able to use the length you have from wrapping the current strings around the posts to thread through. Step three. So now unscrew the current tuners from the back of the guitar. If the screws are in tight, it's good to use a full size screwdriver for easy leverage and to avoid stripping the heads of the screws. Step four. Then remove the bushings from the tuners. It's worth holding the tuner from the back to avoid it falling out and the tuner from spinning around as you turn the wrench. Be careful in this step and take your time so as not to scratch your headstock. Step five. A smart step is to measure the peg hole size of your current guitar. That way, you know when you're ordering the right size of locking tuners for your guitar. It's also worth trying to match the type of tuner to avoid needing to drill extra holes if you can. So whether it's a Cluson style, Grover, or regular style tuner, for example. Step six. Then grab your new tuners and screw them in. You don't really need to go overboard and risk cracking your finish. Just tight enough to where you turn and you feel force stopping you going any further. Step seven. Then you can put the bushings on and the nuts. Make sure you have the bevel side up on the nut, flat side down. Like the screws in the back, tighten just until you feel resistance. Step eight. You want the strings to be tight with as little scope to pull out as possible. So we'll be using the analog clock method to achieve the best result. That will stop slippage, or at worst, the strings popping out of the tuner. On a Strat style guitar with inline tuners, you would use the 543321 method. So the higher strings are at more of an angle, which will give you more tension and prevent pop out. On a Les Paul or SG style guitar, or any guitar with a 3 plus 3 tuner setup, things are naturally slightly different. It's going to be 5, 4, 3, 9, 10 and 11 o'clock. The idea is that the increase in angle on the higher strings and the extra winds should mean there's less chance of a string coming free. Step 9. So let's get your tuning holes at the correct angle. Step 10. Make sure that the ball end of the string is up against the bridge so that there can be no movement later on there. Pull the string through the locking tuner enough so it feels tight. Make sure the string is running in the bridge groove. Then tighten the locking mechanism and tune up to pitch. Stretch it out and repeat that two or three times so the string stays in tune over time. You can stretch the string, for example, by running your hand up the string and gently pulling along the string as you go. If you want to go the extra mile to stretch them out, you can also go along and bend the strings to really get them broken in. You can then clip off the end of the string, checking the locking mechanism is fully tightened and secure so that there's no movement. I thought the look of these is really interesting. I really like the look. It looks kind of modern and um, really quite different and quite serious compared to normal sort of Cluson, you know, those kind of style, or even the normal sort of metal style tuners that you normally get. These look very serious indeed. They're nice and easy to use. And yeah, it gives a bit of a different look to a guitar in general. I suppose it might sort of suit somebody who's really into heavy metal or something like that. 
or me, I like a bit of traditional and a bit of modern on my guitars, so I think these look really cool actually. It is worth noting though, that Guy could do do just normal looking tuners as well. So here's a pro tip on how to change the look of your locking tuners without having to change the whole thing. So as you can see, I've got my locking tuner here and they all have a little screw on the end. So you can actually remove the tuning peg buttons if you so wish. So the tuning peg button just comes off very easily like that. And you can fit another one on. And there you have it. You can change the look of your locking tuner without having to change the whole mechanism. Geica also just do tuning peg buttons if you just wish to change the look of your locking tuners. I thought it would be fun to have a quick look back to back comparing the Geica locking machine heads versus hip shot locking tuners too. As you can see, the hip shot have open gears and they have this bracket to hold the tuners in place. That can be good in terms of fitting onto most guitar types. You'll have to decide for yourself how you feel about the aesthetics of these. In terms of functionality, both sets of tuners work very well. Geica also do produce a full range of different types of tuners for most needs. It's also worth bearing in mind that the hip shot tuners are a lot more expensive. The Geica tuners are incredibly good value for a cheap option and I've not had any quality control issues with them. Overall thoughts on the Geica locking machine heads. So Geica sent me these for a brutally honest review and I've installed these on my Grote Les Paul style guitar. It's a good budget option guitar but the tuners on mine were not so great and gave way when bending strings. I was very hopeful that these tuners would fix that. I always go in with some trepidation with a new product until I've tested it for myself. I'm glad to say that the result has been worth it. They feel solid and installation was easy. I've had other budget brand locking tuners before and they were just not worth the price of admission. These work well though and now I've got a guitar I can rely on at a gig and so these I believe are a good budget option. Link in the description below if you're interested in getting them yourself. Now it is worth mentioning the locking tuners alone may not fix a stability issue on your guitar alone. There are a lots of reasons that contribute to a guitar's tuning stability, from the strings used through to the nut slots being cut properly. However, these can really help eliminate the tuners as a problem in your setup. If you like this content, please do like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.